In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him, and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to a synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue, official came to believe in the Lord along with his entire household and many of the Corinthians who heard believed and were baptized the word of the Lord thanks be to God our response the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power sing to the Lord a new song for he has done wondrous deeds his right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord, Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has, has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God, Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me, and again a little while later, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us, A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? And because I am going to the Father. So they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? 
we do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices, you will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, our Mass intention for today is twofold. For the people of Bimini who today begin their third full day of quarantine and lockdown as on that island they seek to stem and hopefully to stop the spread of the coronavirus, COVID-19, among them. Also, we remember the victims of Hurricane Dorian, whose remains are today beginning to be prepared for burial on that island on Abaco, the island of Abaco, tomorrow. The Thursday of the sixth week of the Easter season on our liturgical calendar is the Ascension of the Lord. Now in our Archdiocese today, this Thursday of the sixth week, which is the Ascension, we transfer the feast to this coming Sunday. And our Mass this coming Sunday, which will be streamed for us over our social media platforms, our Mass this Sunday comes from St. Anselm Church with Father Noel Clark. In our Gospel today, Jesus is still very much in a farewell mode. We find him saying to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. And then later on, at the end of the passage, he says, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The grief that they will experience is because they will witness, at a distance to be sure, but they will witness the passion, the crucifixion and death of the Lord. The joy of which the Lord speaks is because of the fact that they will experience his resurrection. Reflecting on the resurrection and sharing in this joy which the Lord mentions to his disciples is what we are invited to do by the church during these days of the Easter season. You know our journey through the Easter season has left us accompanied by the Acts of the Apostles and we've been reflecting on the missionary journeys of Paul and his companions. And today we see that Paul has now reached the city of Corinth and this is worth sharing some commentary on as by way of background about where Paul is at this time the city of Corinth. We're told that in the ancient world, the city of Corinth was synonymous with moral depravity. It was a bad place, so to speak. And given its cosmopolitan atmosphere, it is not surprising that Corinth had a reputation for drunkenness and debauchery. In the ancient Greek the term Corinthian girl referred to a woman of somewhat blemished character and virtue, blemished virtue. I think you know what I mean. And to say that someone was Corinthianized meant that they really were in the habit of misbehaving. Imagine. Now, in the city, there were various pagan cults and mystery religions all competing for followers. The moral degradation and the confusion of the culture of Corinth, that's the background 
that Paul meets as he arrives. And Paul arrives with an astounding message. And his message is this. There is salvation and there is freedom from sin in Christ. That's what he proclaimed. And it was at Corinth that Paul actually accomplished some of his greatest works of evangelization and conversions, as we saw at the very end of our reading today. Paul, of course, wrote not one but two letters to the church at Corinth. And in, that first, in the first of those two letters, we find Paul saying, Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The power of God and the wisdom of God. That was Paul's message to the Corinthians. That message still resounds through the ages to us as well. What's the significance of Christ, this risen one? He is the power of God, the wisdom of God, the very presence of God in our midst. And that's reason for us to spend some time reflecting on the significance of the risen Lord in our lives. And that perhaps too is the reason why Jesus says to his disciples, you will rejoice. It is a joyful message. Let us relish it. Let us reflect on it. Let us appreciate it. Let us indeed rejoice in it. We put our needs before the Lord this day. And we pray once again for our nation and all its needs at this time. For those in Bimini who are in lockdown that they may continue to benefit from this time of seeking to prevent the virus from spreading among them so that the public health and dignity may certainly be secured. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who mourn and have been mourning for some time, those who have died as a result of Hurricane Dorian, who are soon to be buried tomorrow, in fact, in Abaco, that, they, that the souls be certainly granted God's presence, be drawn into God's presence, and all those who mourn may be consoled. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the, that last, that newest case of COVID, which was announced yesterday among us, and for all those who have indeed been confirmed as cases of COVID-19, that the Lord may grant them healing and protection and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we now, let us not forget to pray for all those who, by their profession, must care for those infected by COVID-19, for all the frontline medical profession, professionals and all the allied services as well. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those who continue by their work to make our lives comfortable, during these days, particularly those who work in various stores and pharmacies and wherever else, that the Lord may protect them and comfort them and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now in silence put our own needs before the Lord. For all these things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear, O Lord, our prayers and grant our needs in accord with your will and keep us always servants, grateful and faithful to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name for our good and good of all His holy church. 
May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the aid, for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom and the, power and the glory, glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins Lord. of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. At this time, for all those of us, so many of us, unable now to receive the sacrament physically, as the Church provides, we make our act of spiritual communion as we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul, at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now, as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. 
Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. A wonderful day, everyone.